Hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're talking about vision transformers. Now, if you don't know, vision transformers apply the transformer and attention architectures onto images. In this video, we will be building a vision transformer in PyTorch and just train it on a simple data set to see how it all works end to end. And we will also do some visualizations to see where exactly the transformers are paying attention to while classifying uh, MNIST digits. Also, in my last video, I implemented a transformer from scratch. So we went from the basic building blocks of attention and all the way to how self-attention, causal mask attention and transformers work. And we trained a language model to demonstrate how it all fits together. This video is going to be an extension of that. So how to apply the same models we trained for language training to a computer vision task where, where the inputs are not text but images. So if at any point, if you feel that the code is not making much sense, then I assure you, if you go watch that last video, it'll all make sense. Okay, with that out of the way, let's head into Vision Transformers. Welcome to Neural Breakdown. You're magnificent. Let's go. So to start off, what are vision transformers? The vision transformers are the type of neural network architectures that apply the concept of attention and transformers on images to do computer vision tasks. So to understand what vision transformers are actually doing, you have to understand the concept of inductive bias. And you have to also understand how normally computer vision tasks have been done before the advent of transformers. So the leading architecture for image related tasks have always been convolutional neural networks. CNNs train a bunch of kernels that scan through the input image to extract relevant features that frequently occur in the input image. The concept of a kernel introduces a location bias, meaning that it assumes that nearby pixels together give a lot of information. So these kernels try to capture the information stored in the nearby pixels of the image. So by default, CNNs do not capture global level image patterns. A single convolution layer can only pick up localized features depending on the kernel size. Now, CNNs do stack up multiple convolution layers one after the other and also use things like pooling to eventually scale to capture the global information of the image. But a single convolution layer is still largely a local operation, not a global one. This is a form of inductive bias where you enforce a certain behavior into your neural networks depending on the data that you're working with because humans sort of assume that information about the properties of an image lies within this uh, clusters of pixels grouped together, we have designed CNNs in a way that utilizes that fact to train a much more linear model. Now, at the opposite end of inductive bias is the concept of generality. Basically, transformers and vision transformers, they don't uh, rely on any of these location specific inductive bias and instead try to capture the global patterns of the image at one shot. Each vision transformer layer tries to look at the entire image at once by providing self attention across different patches of the image. Algorithmically, we take the input image, we break it up into these different patches and then treat these patches as a sequence, similar to how language modeling is done where we treat a sentence as a sequence of tokens. Here, a single image is a sequence of patches. Each patch also receives a positional embedding that tells the neural network the location of the patch in the original image. And then they go through several self-attention steps. Basically, at the beginning, each of the patch embeddings are independent in nature. They don't share any information within each other at all. The self-attention block is responsible to add context to each of these patches, basically introducing them with each other. At the end of each self-attention block, each of the patch embedding gets updated to be contextually aware of all of the other patches in the sequence. And this context obviously is updated using the concept of attention, which we had discussed in that previous video. If you don't remember, the way self-attention works is as follows. Each patch embeddings get converted into query key and value embeddings. And then to find the contextual embedding of a specific patch, we take the query embedding of that patch and compute the dot product with all of the key embeddings of all of the other patches. This dot product tells us the amount of semantic similarity between the query embedding with the key embeddings of all of the other patches. And depending on this semantic similarity, we calculate the attention scores, which gives a weighted value to each of the other patches in the image. 
And finally, to calculate the context, we will do a weighted mean of the values depending on the attention weights that we had calculated earlier. We also add this special CLS token at the beginning of the path sequence and pass that through the self-attention layers as well. And after passing through all of the layers, we take the CLS token and then do downstream tasks with the embedding of the CLS token. I have a video about the history of computer vision where I go into all of these topics in much more details. So please go check it out if you're interested in this area. With that out of the way, let's dive into code and see how all this is done. Also, if you're enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit the like button and show some love to the channel. A huge shout out to our Patreon supporters. Thanks a lot for all your support. I do upload all of the code produced in this video as well as all the other videos in the channel, all of my projects on that Patreon channel. So if you haven't checked out our Patreon yet, go check it out. It's awesome. Let's go back to the video. So let's do a quick review of our last video where we did all of the attention and transformer code. At the heart of it all, we have this calculate masked attention function, which takes values, keys and query and outputs attention and attention scores. Now, in the last video, we also talked about masked attention, wherein if you input a mask like a right triangular mask, you'll be able to model causal dependencies. But for images, we don't really need to pass in a mask. So we are just going to pass this mask as none so that each patch is able to pay attention to all of the patches in the sequence irrespective of where they occur and finally we have this transformer layer which pretty much initializes a list of these transformer blocks within it so if you want to train a three layer transformer you, you pass num layers equal to three and it will initialize these three transformer blocks and in the forward function it's just going to pass the input x through these transformer blocks one by one all of these stuff was already discussed in the previous video, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. Uh, please go check out that previous video if you haven't seen it. Finally, we come to the Vision Transformer class. So the Vision Transformer class strains a special convolution layer. This convolution layer is basically used to do that splitting operation that we talked about earlier. Notice the inputs to the convolution layer, especially the kernel size and the stride. Because both of them are equal to the patch size, you're effectively patching your input. How? Suppose you have a patch size of 7. Then you're training a 7 by 7 kernel to aggregate all of the information in at the top leftmost 7 by 7 patch of pixel. And then because the stride is also set to 7, you shift the kernel by 7 pixel to reach the next patch. And, and you repeat this process to go from a 28 by 28 image to a 4 by 4 image. And if you see here, that's what the first step is in the forward function. Given the image, you basically pass it through the patch embedding function. And, and next you flatten each patch into a, into a one dimensional vector by doing this x dot flatten two. And so what that does is it converts into a three dimensional input where the first dimension is the patch size, the second is the number of patches, and the third is the flattened embedding size. Finally, you add your CLS token, which is another trainable parameter you add onto your image sequence as we talked about earlier in the video and then you add the positional encoding which are again these sinusoidal encodings that uh, are fixed throughout the training process these are not trainable parameters they basically tell the transformer model about which uh, patch belong to which location in the sequence and finally you pass it through your transformer model which remember the transformer model inputs the number of layers which contains each of the transformer blocks that it passes through. And the transformer blocks contain the attention layer and the feed forward layer and the layer normalization layer. And the attention layer is actually calling the calculate mask attention with mask equal to none. So it's, it's a proper self attention. Uh, so yeah, that's how you can pretty much code a vision transformer. And to train a classifier from this vision transformer, we basically write another class called VIT classifier, which has a vision transformer within it and a linear layer, a simple linear layer that maps the last CLS token embedding to the number of classes. So for MNIST, this num classes will be 10. Uh, and then in the forward function, you pass your image through the vision transformer, and then you pass it through the linear layer to obtain the num classes. Let's quickly run that. Here we are passing some random image, 1128 by 28. And here we are using the VIT classifier that we wrote here. And we have set the path size to four, the num channels, num channels to just one because we're 
assuming it's a grayscale image uh, the embedding size i just picked a very small value like 16 and the number of layers are are set to four so there are four of these transformer blocks and the num classes is 10 because mnist has 10 classes if we run that we will indeed see that we are just training you know 6000 parameters it's a very small model but you see the output shape is 1 comma 10 which is basically this one stands for this batch here so if, if, if i pass in six images it, it will output six uh, of, of these uh, things and the 10 is basically the number of class so if, if i passed in num class 8 that will be 6 comma 8. Uh, let's see a little bit more about the output of this vision transformer as well so for that let's pass in the vit dot vit so let's see the shape of this guy so the shape of this guy is 6 which is the batch size then we have this 50 what is this 50 well you see the batch size is 4 and the image size is 28 so there are 7 patches along the rows and the 7 patches along the columns so total 49 patches but why is it 50 well 50 is equivalent to that CLS token that we are adding so 49 plus 1 is 50 so obviously if we set the patch size to 7 we now see this turn to 17 which basically means that because the patch size is 7 you have 4 patches along the rows 4 along the columns so 16 total and so you have 17 because plus 1 for the uh, CLS token and this last 16 is actually the embedding size so if, if you wanted to capture more information we'll increase the embedding size and that will also increase the embedding dimension as well now we are just receiving the output which is the final contextual embeddings of all of the patches in the end obviously if you want the patch embedding of just the CLS token we will have to do something like this where we just extract the first one from the second dimension suppose we also want to return the attention scores as well to see how, how the attention scores had shaped out uh, well thankfully I I've also written it in a way that if you pass this return attention to true it basically returns all of the attention scores scores right from the transformer block up to the vision transformer class so let's try that for a bit and say attention maps let's see the first attention map and what that its shape is so the first attention map shape is 6 comma 17 by 17 the 6 again is the batch dimension the 17 comma 17 they basically capture all of the attention weights given by each patch to all of the other patches in the sequence so if, if I just did attention map 0 0 this is a 17 by 17 matrix for the first image of, of the batch. If I printed this out, now that's a lot of numbers, but let's let's actually increase the patch size to 14 so that we have a very small amount of um, pixels to worry about. And now if we did this shape, this will be just five by five. So if we do that, we now have a very small attention maps. Basically here, we have just divided our image into four patches and we are calculating the amount of attention given to each patch so in this example you basically see the first row is what the attention the cls token is giving to all of the patches in the sequence the second is is telling you what the first patch is giving to all of the batch in the sequence and so on and the fun part about attention maps is that if we just do a sum around it'll all come to one which which basically means that this is a probability distribution this is weights that all add up to one so if you if you took all of these values and then you did a sum of these turn out to be very close to one okay so hopefully that sort of explains the logistics between what we're doing here uh, now let's train this vision transformer on an MNIST data set to see how it goes so here I have loaded the MNIST data set and then let's uh, train it for you know 10 epochs and as this thing is training I'll, I'll quickly explain what's going on well this is just a normal training loop where we pass in the X and the Y the X is the image the Y is is the ground truth label for that image we pass the output through our vision transformer we calculate the loss which is a cross entropy loss and then we apply the optimizer dot uh, step function and the loss dot backward to update the network weights through gradient descent and as you can see the loss has been going down as as it's as it's training okay so that finished training let's now do some inference and print out the first 10 examples and here you can see the outputs 7 and it picks 7 2 1 it is always almost right Yay, our model trained correctly. Woohoo! Got all of them just right, as expected. Here I have also, you know, written some code to display the amount of attention the CLS token is providing to each of the patches in the image while generating the output. And let's see 
what happened what is happening here and as you can see these are the places that the model ended up providing attention to the maximum while while predicting uh, the class of these images Well, that's it from my end for this video. I hope you had some fun learning about how vision transformers work. We did use a single headed query key value attention mechanism in this video, but I think in my next video, I'm going to talk more about other types of attention like multi headed attention and multi query attention and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned for that video to drop. Um, well, that's it from my end. Hope you had fun learning about vision transformers in this quick and easy video. Goodbye.